We're here at Karora Creek Road, just 1.2 kilometres from Kaka Point, the scenic coastal gateway to the Catlins. But this is also an area that marks where a community lost its innocence when 15-year-old schoolgirl Kylie Ann Smith was abducted from her horse, brought to this area and was raped and brutally murdered at the hands of Paul Bailey. For Bevan Smith, the knowledge of the pain that his daughter went through in those final hours haunted him for the rest of his days. In 1991, the Owaka Kylie Smith belonged to was a sleepy rural hamlet of around 400 people where everyone knew everyone. The community was typical, conservative and tight-knit, with the highest rate of church attendance in New Zealand. But this safe haven was rocked when Kylie was taken from the roads they had driven all their lives. Within hours, over 200 residents would search through the night for Kylie and would share in her family's grief when she was found dead the following afternoon. At 15 years old, Kylie Smith was developing into a promising young equestrian rider. She shone brightly at Catlin's Area School, where her mother Dawn taught, and was the apple of her father, plumber Bevan Smith's eye. Tall, blonde, with blue eyes, she was easily identifiable on her black mount Nick as she rode out of town most days. With a wide, engaging smile and an infectious, bubbly personality, Kylie was popular among her schoolmates and the wider Awaka community, and was a school council representative and class captain. She had her whole life in front of her. Kylie's parents, Bevan and Dawn Smith, were born in Awaka and trusted the close community their children grew up in. I always said to people, this is a wonderful place to bring children up. And that was the stupidest thing to say. But it was like that, and we, was, we didn't find anybody suspicious. We just accepted people for what they were. We're probably a bit naive when you think about it, but we had no other reason not to be, because that's the way it was. Everybody looked out for everybody else. And you waved to everybody, you talked to everybody. On Friday, the 1st of November, Kylie went riding after school, but her horse, Nick, came back without her. Despite extensive searches, she was not found that evening. Dawn knew something terrible had happened. This is going to sound really crazy, but I, we had a sofa where those chairs are in there, and I was lying there, TV was on, but I don't think we were watching it, and all I could feel was a, something on my forehead right here, as though I was a spider or something was working, walking on my head. And it went on and on and on. And I thought, I think she's telling me something because at seven o'clock that night he killed her. Late on Saturday afternoon, the Smith family received the news no one wants to hear. I took us into her bedroom and told us because the house was full. We had people everywhere. They just took it, the police took us into her bedroom and told us. But I think we knew. Police revealed that Paul Bailey, an English immigrant, had raped and murdered Kylie before driving home to have dinner with his family. At the time, Bailey was on bail for attempted rape in central Otago. Dawn was unhappy with the police in central Otago, who she believed allowed him to roam freely. She also felt let down by the local Baptist church decision to rehabilitate Bailey in Awaka. It's just been a... I was going to say a comedy of years, but it's not funny. It's just been a lot of misfortune and sadness. For Bevan, coping in the aftermath of losing his daughter in such a horrific way was difficult. It's gone over and over in my mind what took place, you know, how, how she reacted or how she stood up to it all. I'm going to say this now too because I think this is part of the reason why it broke his heart. Sorry. The kids had so much faith in him they'd say, Dad will fix it. But 
but of course Dad couldn't fix this one, and I think that's that played on his mind for, till he died. He wasn't there for his daughter. I think he died of a broken heart, basically. The impact on the community was wide-reaching. In the wake of the tragedy, the local Baptist pastor received bomb threats, his children were persecuted, and he was run out of town. A kind man, taken in by Bailey, the pastor was broken by what happened. For Dawn, learning of his struggles tugged at her heart. Actually, you're making me feel guilty now too because we drove them out of town. Him and the, the pharmacy men. I didn't know that. I feel awful. I feel as I need to go and see them. At the end of the day, the family, the community and the Baptist Church were all victims of Paul Bailey. And 30 years on, the pain of Bailey's crimes is everlasting to those that were part of the community that fateful day. It's not only our lives that he's affected. It's been like the um, stone in a pole, hasn't it? It's just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it hasn't been good. All of, none of it is good. It's just been very sad and to the detriment of a lot of families. I just can't believe that we've let a man do that. For Dawn and those closest to Kylie, the anger at Paul Bailey remains. If he walked into this room now, I would pick up a knife and I'd kill him. Oh, that's what I'm saying I'd do. I probably would. I just loathe the man intensely. And if he gets out, we're in trouble. Paul Bailey was sentenced to life imprisonment for the rape and murder of Kylie Smith in 1992, but his offending extended far beyond Awaka. He would also be subsequently sentenced to three and a half years for the attempted rape of an Ettrick woman in 1991 and three years imprisonment on two charges of rape and one charge of unlawful sexual intercourse of a then 12-year-old girl between 1989 and 1990. He remains in Rolleston Prison almost 30 years later, with the parole board deeming him too high a risk to re-enter society.